Hi guys, welcome to the video. Now, today's topic, what I wanna talk about, really is about why investing in Pokemon and trading card collectibles isn't as silly as it sounds, or isn't as bad as it sounds or people make it out to be. Now, this video came about because I got a comment on a video and the person said, if you invest in Pokemon, what the hell, you should be investing in Bitcoin or you know all these other forms. This is obviously, it's a, it's a card game, there's no use in it. Now, I wanted to make this video and address that because I find it an interesting topic and the one that I'm really passionate about. But why I wanna talk about why collectibles aren't a bad investment and why I think they're an interesting way to have different areas to invest in. There's a good saying in life that your greatest strength is usually your greatest weakness, right? So when we think of Pokemon cards, right? What is their greatest weakness? The fact that they are just cardboard, right? They, they, they actually serve no value. But what's their greatest strength? The fact that they're just cardboard. Now, let me explain why. When you buy a collectible or an item that is loved by collectors, the intent of that purchase serves no utility in the real world. Now, I want you to think when you buy or if you invest in a crypto, if you invest in anything of a, um, whether it be something like a, you know, lithium batteries or you're investing in something because there might be a medicinal breakthrough, you're investing in the potential for the utility of that to succeed in the long term. So you have no use with that investment if the future doesn't work out how you intend. If you're, if you're investing in lithium batteries and in 15 years they decide that lithium batteries aren't the way to go, you've been investing in something that you're betting on a future where it works. Whereas with Pokemon and trading cards, you're not actually investing in any future kind of, there's, there's nothing inherently special about them. The buyer knows the decision that it's literally a collectible. And this works in its favor because there's nothing about the card that the buyer is really hoping for it to achieve. Some people might buy cards in their collections and they say, oh, it might grow. That do Some people do do that. But a lot of people who collect collectibles, they just want it in their collection. Because investing in collectibles, there is nothing special about them other than the fact that they're rare. So the utility is you're not banking on any utility out of them, meaning that a lot of people who buy these investments and they enjoy Pokemon cards and they enjoy Pokemon card collecting, they're just doing it out of nostalgia and hobbies. People don't realize how much people will pay for nostalgia. And the reason for that is because usually people associate cards, cars, things that they loved in their childhood with a better time. It's not that it was a better time. Nostalgia is rarely accurate. It's usually rose tinted glasses of a time where you experienced positive emotions. And now in the future, when you're looking back at that time, you're not seeing how hard that time was. You're just seeing the benefits. And if you actually learn about nostalgia and the reason why we have it is because the human mind prefers to view the past as positive and we like to block out any of the negative things that happen in our past. So what that leaves us with is we get these memories from the past, these things that we cling on to from the past, and we we glorify them in our minds. So when we think of, you know, you know, this is a Pokemon and card collecting channel. So when you're thinking of that base set era, those kids are remembering the first time they pulled the pack. They're remembering those cards and they're glorifying it. And it's not an accurate representation of what was actually happening in the past, but today's mind views it as that. So then they're gonna pay a premium because they feel that they're gonna get an experience from that time with these cards that are kind of only created in the past. That's the reason why people and I like investing in collectibles because I really understand how powerful nostalgia is as a driving factor and people will spend crazy amounts of money to re-experience times, especially if it's associated with their childhood, right? Now, nostalgia is not just for childhood. People get nostalgic, you know, you, if, if you're 50, you can get nostalgic for your 20s. If you're 60, you can get nostalgic for your 40s. It, it doesn't really have a thing, but there's something specific about times when you were a kid, you experienced these things. When you're an adult, you really will pay a premium. Baseball cards, man. Baseball cards, people 
pay wild amounts for older cards that they were ripping open as kids. The same thing's going with Pokemon. If you just want to see where Pokemon card collecting will go, just look at sports cards. Now, there was a junk wax era in sports card in the 90s where they kind of just overprinted everything. And people say, oh, Pokemon's going through a junk wax era at the moment. Uh, I'm not too, I disagree with that a little bit because I think the, the sports card have a lot of different companies making sports card, whereas Pokemon only has one company creating the cards. So it's a little bit different in the sense that we're not really in a junk wax era, but we do have a lot of overproduction at the moment, which I do agree with. The, the greatest thing that I really want to make about investing in collectibles and why I don't think that as bad as it sounds is because exactly that point that I said, the utility of them is not there. So that is really good because the buyer on the other end and the seller both know that these are just one, ser they, they, they serve one purpose to have it in a collection, which is really great because it then only, it, it doesn't have a thing where you're expecting some crazy future from these. These are they, they can go down they can go down in value. Don't think that they can't. But they also it, it, it's it's hard for them to go down in value because they're discontinued. So a lot of these items are discontinued. They get lost. People still have the connection with them as long as the demand is still there. The collectibles are hard to go down in value, man. And like it's not just that. Like there's so many different collectibles in different versions, in different areas, in different mediums that that they, they really really hold well, man. Collectibles actually have a unique way of holding and it's because there's so much emotional attachment to them. And not only that, like even if you can't get something, right? So like, let's say you are, you're completely priced out. If the price does drop down a little bit, a lot of people have that point where they're like, you know what, now that it's at a price point, I'm gonna jump in. And then they jump in and then the price starts going up. It's just a constant. If it goes down a little bit, people start jumping in. If it goes down, people start jumping in. It's a very hard for them to just tank out, especially discontinued items. To me, it's very unlikely that base set cards or real old vintage cards, if Pokemon keeps going with the way they're going and they keep growing and they and they become this powerhouse in 20 to, you know, if Pokemon makes a 50th year anniversary. For me, I just, it's gonna be hard to see new fans that enter. A lot of these new fans that enter, they start researching all the sets. I mean, baseball card collectors of today, the people in their 20s and 30s, they're researching the old. They're researching the old cards and the old sets. They, they, they find it interesting. So then they look at those real old sets and then they get attached to them. So. For me, it's going to be hard to find, you know, in 30 years from now that people who grow up, they're going to probably want to be researching the first Pokemon cards that ever came out, the first Pokemon game that ever came out, the, the, the second generation wave of cards that came out, Neo Destiny, what's that? They're going to be researching that. So it's, man, it is hard for these cards to just become wiped out of people's memories and existence, especially with the internet, especially with so much resources. You've got photos of all these people know what's happening. It's unlikely that these can just be, you know, go out in a blip. But at the same time, collectibles as, as, as investments, I don't think they're a bad thing at all. I think a lot of people who say, oh, you're investing in this, you're investing in that. Of course, because you know what? It's enjoyable because guess what? If I buy a sealed booster box and I'm sitting on it, if that sealed booster box never went up in value, let, let's say it never went up in value. Let's say 20 years past, I got a booster box from today and it never went up in value. Man, I would love still opening it. To me, it's a win-win. I'd be able to go with my daughter. I'd be able, I'll tell my daughter, hey, check this out. This is dad's booster box that I bought 20 years ago when you were five years old, you're 25. Let's open it now. Let's see what cards are inside. Because I still love card collecting. It's one of my favorite hobbies that I've ever had. Um, I know that in 20 years, it's still gonna remind me of those good memories of a childhood when I just collected cards. It's one of my favorite things to do as a kid. So opening it in 20 years, even if it didn't go up in value, to me, it's a win-win. I'm real. I'm not investing in booster boxes that cost three, four grand. I'm, I'm buying them at retail price today. You know, so 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 to me, it doesn't have much risk because I still know there would be an enormous amount of enjoyment for me opening these products later down the line. But I also, for me, it it is hard for me to think that a, a booster box of today, that in the in 20 years from today, that it will just be completely rendered useless. In fact, I think I could probably sell it always at the price that I bought it for in 20 years from now. So. I mean, they're just things to think about, you know, w w when thinking of collectibles as investment. You gotta just remember that it is an enjoyment and people do love hobbies. And hobbies are, man, like you will see people spend so much money on their hobbies. People will spend a lot of money on their hobbies and it's a loved area. So I wouldn't worry when people, like, it's not gonna make you a fortune, right? 
it's not going to make your fortune. But you can't deny that it is a fun area to invest in. It is just enjoyable. It's great. It's a hobby form of investment. And I always say that it should be a hobby. The hobby of this precedes the investment. Because if you're just buying booster boxes of one piece and Lorcana and you're just saying, oh, this is because I believe it's going to grow. Don't do that, man, because you're not enjoying what you're buying. You're not loving it. You don't actually have a connection with it. So if it never went on value, you would lose. Because you don't care about ripping open Lorcana. You don't care if there's those cards. So why are you going to buy something? I, I actually, if I don't like a Pokemon set, I don't buy it. I don't invest in it because I think it's going to... I have to make sure that I still enjoy it as a product. I'm not buying Battle Styles. I don't like Battle Styles. So why am I going to invest in it? Because I just think Battle Styles is going to go up. Do you, I didn't invest in Rebel Clash, but Rebel Clash went up. It doesn't bother me at all. Because I never liked Rebel Clash to begin with. So what's the point of me buying a booster box of something I don't like? To me, it's just too hard to make sense of that. I would rather buy a booster box of Temporal Forces because I genuinely like the cards of Temporal Forces. I think they're really cool. So that's the kind of area I want to just take that. And I want to say as collectibles, yes, they're just, they're an enjoyable investment. They're an enjoyable hobby and the hobby precedes the investment. Never forget that. That is the advice I want to share with everyone. Anyone who watches my content, anyone who really enjoys the videos I make, it's really always hobby over investment. Never ever get those two mixed up. Never buy this set because oh, it's short printed. So it's short printed. So I'm now going to buy it because it's going to go up because of it's short printed. What are you doing? What are you doing? You do not like the product. Don't do that. That is so ridiculous. Enjoy what you buy. If you love the set, buy the set. And, and like, like I said, it's always hobby over investment. Never forget that in this space. This, that, that, that's the space I really like to talk about. But guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Let me know in the comments what you think. And also, if you do enjoy this content, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to have you on board the channel. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video.